Hey, so this is the, the next video in the series showing you how to actually make a code change in GitLab Runner. In particular, I'm going to show you how to set up fleeting with AWS, um, how to get it all running together, how to make a change, and how to test it locally. So um, in the previous videos, I showed you how to set up your development environment, showed you did a code walkthrough. So you've already seen the um, internal autoscaler provider. So that's kind of our starting point here. So um, here you have this provider. In order to get this thing running, we actually need to configure it. Of course, you need to configure the runner with a token, register it, et cetera. So here is an example of, um, of what runner would look like uh, when after you register it. So that's sort of like um, you can go uh, Google how to register the runner, basically go into the UI, you get the registration token, you run the runner locally, and tell it to register. You give it the registration token. It talks to GitLab, either locally or whatever you are, all you gave it. It gives you a token specific to that runner, and then it puts it in this configuration file. So I've removed mine, for, you know, because uh, you shouldn't see it. <laughs> and um, uh, now, whenever you run the runner, it uses this config file, provides that token, is able to get jobs. Um, there's a few other things that you provide here. For example, um, you give the URL, which is gitlabrunner.com. Um, I'm using this gitlabrunner.com because right now I'm not, don't need to change anything in that code. So I can just use that and make a really simple hello world uh, project and just have it just feed me jobs. That's basically what we're gonna, I'm gonna show you here. And that way we could just iterate on just the runner code. Um, and uh, I'm just using bash for now. Now here's here's where it gets cool. Um, inside of this runner's autoscaler um, uh, configuration, I've told it there's a couple different plugins. Notice I've actually got two of them. One of them's common to doubt. I, I can actually switch between Google and AWS just by changing this plugin here. Okay, these are the plugins that you checked out earlier. Built as a binary, um, uh, they're a go they're a um, HashiCorp. Go plugin binary. You can't run them by themselves, but I'll show you where they get instantiated. Um, they both implement the same interface. So I could just use either one or the other. And this goes for any other cloud number of cloud providers or whatever. You can just like put your, your jobs wherever you want them. Um, same deal, credentials files. I just have to plumb that a file through so that that underlying plugin knows how to, is, has the ability to connect uh, and specify some of the basic stuff like the project, the zone, the region and the username to log into the underlying VM. So um, yeah, that, that configuration um, is pretty pretty straightforward, but I'll let you figure out how to, how to set it up yourself. For now, what I wanna show you is, uh, um, I wanna show you how to actually make the code change. So let's let's find a spot. So here's, here's where we actually initialize the actual uh, plugin that I was mentioning. Um, I'll show you how to build that in just a minute. Um, but let's come down here. Let's see, uh, config updates, blah, blah, blah. All right, so this is the provider. So let's go take a look at the executor itself. All right, um, this is an interesting um, step, prepare. Remember how I said the provider actually does the resource management? This is where um, the provider is doing that for the auto scaling setup of task runner. It says, hey, uh, get me the task scaler for this particular job. Now acquire me some resources, get me a VM. Um, and right now it doesn't have a timeout. So let's add one. Sure, all right, cool. So um, let's take a look at the um, executive prepare options. Um, all right, so here we are. Look what file are we in? We're in GitLab run our common. Um, actually, and we really want to look at uh, the build structure. And in particular, we want to look at the runner options. All right, uh, let's see. Um, runner config, great. So this is the, the configuration for this specific runner. Let's look at the runner settings. This is okay, blah, 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 does a lot of stuff. You should read through this. This is basically the, the Golang version of the of the config file that I showed you just a few minutes ago. All right, so there are a couple interesting things here. First, first of all, here is this uh, autoscaler section that you saw earlier. 
right? With the connector config, all the plugin config and all that stuff that's inside of here. But I'm, I'm gonna add a new, I'm gonna new, add a new one. I'm just gonna call it um, prepare timeout seconds and make it an int. We'll make it, we have to tell it how to translate um, into Toml, prepare timeout seconds, omit, empty, just means that um, uh, if you don't have it, just leave it out, obviously. <laughs> uh pre and J json of prepare timeout seconds again okay did i misspell anything uh, no that looks good all right cool so we have a new field we can add that into the config um now uh let's use it so we're going to come into our executor here and um, down here, we kind of have a hard-coded timeout of five minutes. So let's uh, let's say timeout. Um, we'll start with five minutes. But if our config has uh, prepare timeout seconds, then let's go ahead and change that. So we'll change it to, um, we have to cast to five to a time duration, you know, that's okay. Um, prepare timeout seconds, times time second. Okay, so now we have a new time. Now we have a new timeout and we should actually use it. So let's use it here. All right, cool. So it looks like, oh, you can see it's highlighted. Okay, so it looks like uh, everything's plumbed through correctly. Um, this is cool. All right, so now we have a timeout. All right, let's see what happens when we uh, when we run this thing. So for starters, um, check this out. We've got the fleeting, fleeting plugins. Um, we have to build the AWS plugin that we wanted to use. So I'm going to um, build it here. I'm gonna output it into my bin folder in my home directory. Um, doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's on the path. So I think like go install should work as if you already have the go bin on your on your um, path. Um, I don't. So here I put it here. So I'm gonna build this plugin. Oh, I'm not in the thing. So fleeting plugin AWS. All right, so I'll build it. And now I can type in fleeting plugin AWS, right? And run the thing. But it kindly says, hey, you shouldn't be running this directly. Okay, so I have that built, that's that's good. Task sale is actually imported into GitLab Runner as a library. So uh, this this is the only other binary I need, to, I need to actually build. All right, so I'm gonna go back into GitLab Runner and I'm gonna say, Go run. So run means you know build and run this binary. That means the main file here in the main folder. And the command I'm giving it is a run. So go run run. And it's going to start something up. Oh, hey, this is great. All right. Oh, look, it's uh, firing up some instances for me in AWS. So it's already talking to AWS. This is super great. Um, I'm going to just uh, do a test. So I, I have this hello runner um, project. So I'm going to uh, cat the GitLab CI folder. All it does is it just echoes hello world. So I'm going to modify that. I'm going to say goodbye world. Um, and then it, and then I'm going to git push it. So I get push it and it should kick off a job straight away. Um, and this project is set up not to use the common runners. Um, I registered only this runner with that token to this project. And so it looks like it's run already, which is super great. You can see um, we actually like used an instance, deleted it and replaced it with another instance. That was a task scaler in operations. So um, let's take a look at the logs sort of um, this is the GitLab uh, command line utility. You could use the UI for this too, but it's just gonna like look at that pipeline. 
So what am I what am I actually looking at here? These are the logs in GitLab that it got from that AWS VM. So my goodbye world went into GitLab. It kicked off a job. Runner got that job. It gave it got a VM in AWS, gave it the job to do. The helper downloaded the repository with good, goodbye world. It ran it, sent the logs back to GitLab. And so I'm now looking at them here. Um, so yeah, that's that's super great. All right. So, but we haven't really tested like the change that we made. We added this timeout in the prepare step for getting a VM. Let's let's make it fail. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my runner, and I'm actually gonna make sure that my timeout will fail. Um, and uh, let me just make sure that I actually have a timeout in here. Um, Lab runner config. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this is super great. I was just redacting my token again. Um, if I do show it to you, all I have to do is go into GitLab UI, delete the runner, and re register it. It's not a big deal, but I'm just trying to save myself a little headache. Um, so here's the redacted version of, of uh, that. And you'll notice that I added prepare timeout seconds. It was actually there before if you if you spotted it. But um, yeah, so I've configured timeout to, to 10 seconds, not five minutes, just 10 seconds. All right. So I'm going to um, get my token back. And now let's make it fail. All right. So um, Remember in task scaler, um, I'm going to come in here and we're going to, we're going to actually, we're going to make it fail. So there's in uh, task scaler, there's an acquire step. So that like acquire resources thing you saw in the executor interface, um, uh, it comes all the way down here to task scalar and it tells it to please acquire a resource. Now this, these, this is the nuts and bolts about how it actually gets um, the instance. So, but what we're gonna do here is just gonna cause trouble. All right, so I'm gonna say time, sleep, 15 seconds. Just beyond our limit. All right, so now task scalers are gonna take more than 10 seconds to acquire a VM. So let's see what happens. All right, so, all right, let's fire it up again. Go run, run. And then we're going to make another change. Goodbye world. Let's say hello timeout. It's gonna push it. This is gonna be super great, hopefully. Um, and that job shows up. All right, I just ignore that error. I don't know what that error is. Um, it's preparing the instance and sleeping. <laughs> so hopefully it'll fail. So let's uh, let's actually just go ahead and, and start tailing those logs now. Let's do Aha! This is not good. So in the UI, it'll only say, you know, like just these errors. You could see them in color on the GitLab runner log. Uh, in addition to some other debug stuff. Yeah, so didn't work out very well. Unable to acquire instance, context deadline exceeded. That's exactly what we were looking for. So uh, there you go. That's how you actually make a change, how you can test it locally. Um, I'm going to just show you a few other tips and tricks for when things go badly, because they always do. If it works, we don't do it. <laughs> um, Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna stop this guy here, and instead of run, well, I'm gonna run it again, but I'm gonna add another command here. It's called debug. Just makes the logs more verbose. This is like next level of like figuring out what's going on. All right, so there's that. Let's um, let's make another change and just see how the logs are different. Um, Okay, here we go. I'll get a little bit more information. Blah, blah, blah. 
Okay. Great. I think it's leaking my token there. Guess I'll have to change that. All right. Um, super duper. Let's let's try something else though. Um, the whole point of running this locally is so we actually can get our hands on the running code. So um, if you're not familiar with Delve, you should go check it out. It's the basically the de facto debugger for Golang. So if you want if you want to run runner in Delve, you just use the command line Delve, replace run with debug, and then um, you still point it to the main, add two dashes, and then the rest of those will just get piped through Delve to the binary when it starts as command line flags. This, so here, Delve, debug, debug, run. <laughs> we were real repetitive today. All right, so it's gonna, it's gonna build this binary in a debug mode, starts up like this, it's not doing anything. Um, uh, but you can actually hit C for continue and it'll it'll start running. You can control C at any time, uh, restart the binary, make stop points. So for example, if I wanted to see this sleep in action, I could uh, say break, uh, test, scalar, go, um, 144, I'll continue. Um, now we need to actually make a job. So I'm going to say, hello, Delve. OK, this is super helpful for when you can't figure out why something's happening. And now here we are. We can actually step through the code um, and do stuff. Yep. So I'm going to say next, um, et cetera. And it's sleeping, so there's not really a whole lot to check out. So from here on, it's just kind of regular development stuff. Um, once you have the thing running, you know, write a test for it, et cetera. So that's the kind of the basics of making a code change and setting up uh, the actual running uh, uh, running local binary um, and trying it out. So I hope you're able to get it set up too. I hope you make a, a code change and I hope that uh, if there's any bumps in the road, let us know and we'll, we'll update the documents and, and help you figure it out. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.